Hello, uh, my name's Susan Shaw and welcome to this MA Television Open Day presentation. I'm really pleased that we have Monica Daka with us today. Monica is a current student on MA TV and she'll be pleased to tell you a little bit more about the course from a student perspective. Uh, when we reach the end of this presentation. So I'm the course leader of MATV. Next slide, please. So in the webinar, uh, your audio is currently on mute just to help with broadcast quality. And if you do have any questions, you can write them in the questions box on your control panel. There will be a Q&A, a question and answer session uh, once I've reached the end of this presentation. The session is being recorded and it will be hosted on the LCC YouTube channel. Uh, please note there are other members of staff in the session. Their audio has been muted, but you might hear from them if needs be. Okay, next slide, please. So um, London Colle uh, College of Communication is a part of the University of the Arts London, UAL. And this is a diverse body of 18,000 students from 130 countries. UAL, we're very proud to say, is ranked second in the world for art and design in the QS World University rankings. So we're right up there. Next slide, please. So why choose us? Why choose London College of Communication? Well, we are a world leader in creative communications education through our industry-focused courses in design, media, and screen. And if you come to the college, you will immediately join a buzzing and fantastic creative community of filmmakers, designers, journalists, you name it. It's an exciting place to be. Next slide, please. So MATV is part of the Screen School at London College of Communication, LCC. And within the Screen School, we really do encourage collaboration across different disciplines to mirror the real world creative environment of screen production. So within the Screen School, our courses include film, uh, obviously TV, that, that's what we do, animation, sound arts, games art, uh, design, visual effects, and virtual reality. So you might find yourself collaborating at some point with, let's say, an animator or a games maker as part of your experience on MATV. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, that slide is uh, left over from a previous year. I did edit it and never mind, can we move on? Thank you. Um, so, MA Television combines TV industry intelligence, uh, I'll explain what we mean by that, with experience of programme production and development. So there's an element of the course that is totally hands-on and learning through doing. And there's another element of the course where we build your knowledge of the television industry and of television genres and ways of doing things. So we bring a 360 degree perspective to the whole business of television. We ask what it is, what it means, who, who's it for, how it works, and what it might look like in the future. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so MATV is a four-term course. It runs from October to December, so it's a year and a bit. You'll make up to four television programmes on the course and you'll work in teams. Everything's collaborative. So learning methods include lectures, seminars, technical workshops, masterclasses, work placement, if that's available, uh, mentoring and tutorials. Next slide, please. I should add uh, while we're here that what you're looking at on the left hand side of the screen as we proceed through this presentation are images from MATV students work. So, for example, on the left hand side here, we're looking at a documentary about childhood that included elements of animation. So MATV combines industry focused critical analysis of factual television with that practical experience that is so vital of development and production. The learning through doing. OK, so some of the subjects that we cover are the genres of factual television the commissioning landscape, who's got the money and where they're spending it, the digital revolution that has totally transformed the TV industry landscape since around 2000, the global formats trade, that is the buying and selling of television ideas, intellectual property and copyright, again, to do with creative ownership and how people make money from that, career pathways in the industry, story development, casting, production, scheduling, risk assessment, and post-production. And obviously, in those latter categories, you know, you'll be learning about those things in the context of making programmes. So let's talk a little bit about that element of production in the course. Storytelling for the small screen is absolutely at the heart of what we do on MATV. Uh, just to reiterate that we really do believe that the best way for you to learn is through doing. So your journey begins with a very intensive induction, I'm sure Monica will <laughs> agree, um, an immersive induction in the development and realisation of ideas for TV shows, in particular news programmes in the production unit in the first term. So through that unit, you learn how to shape ideas into stories for television. You'll learn how to work in LCC's multi-camera television studio, which is a, a real asset to the course, our on-site TV studio. And alongside that, you'll learn how to shoot documentary content on location. And all of that happens very rapidly right at the beginning of the course. But this development and production activity is complemented by building your knowledge base and sharpening your critical tools in the media cultures unit that runs in parallel with the production unit. Next slide, please. So what do we mean by media cultures and what is this unit? Well, media cultures runs across two terms and you'll embark on an exploration of the creative and commercial landscape of today's TV industry. We ask what drives it, who makes it happen and how it's done. And you'll consider what it all means 
television is a story factory after all and it shapes all of our modern myths it makes and breaks our new gods who we might describe as the celebrities you'll learn about the specialized vocabulary of tv like many other professions the world of television has its own professional language you need to know it and we'll teach it to you you'll study and analyze the myriad forms that factual tv can take you'll examine and practice the various storytelling techniques used in different genres of television and you'll learn how ideas and other forms of creative capital are monetized in the in the industry how people make money from their ideas in other words within a legal and ethical framework next slide please so uh, we also have a collaborative unit and in fact Monica has just come out of a shoot in the TV studio today for the collaborative unit so it's really good of her to make the time to be with us it's a very very busy time for all students on MATV and in the collaboration unit guess what students collaborate with one another to make another television program and teamwork is totally at the core of all creative practice in the tv industry and we mirror that on ma television so everything happens in teams and in your second term, which we're in right now, we're approaching the end of it, you'll devise and make a television program, which will be a collaborative production. Part of the challenge is to find collaborative partners outside the MATV course. This year, students are working with an organization called Psychology, it's an organization that campaigns to raise awareness of mental health issues in football for example so those partners your collaborative partners they can be students on other courses at ual or as in the case of psychology they may be external partners and they could be charities or cam campaign groups or special interest societies so examples of collaborations that have happened on the course previously are a collaboration with sustainable fashion campaigners designers and retailers and a collaboration with ual students who auditioned to form an instant pop band and wrote a song together and recorded a music video with the help of MATV students in the TV studio. It was a great project, a 24 hour pop band, wonderful. Okay, next uh, slide, please. So after the collaborative unit is done, we move on to the major projects unit. And this unit brings together all of students practical work and the understanding that they have built up of the television industry of television genres and of how to make programs we call that industry intelligence and in the third term which starts in april you'll make a tv show in a small team for your major graduation project this production will be supplemented by a proposal which shows off your industry knowledge and a reflection on the journey you've had in the making of your major project production. Next slide, please. Okay, and finally, uh, in your fourth term, where you come back after the summer break in the autumn, we have a unit called professional futures becky i'm sorry the the slide is the 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 screen 
size of the slides is really jumping around there. Um, I'll continue, but um, just to make you aware that's happening. Sorry, attendees, we have a little issue with uh, the size of the image of the presentation, but I'll continue. So in the fourth term, we have a unit called Professional Futures. And Professional Futures does what it says on the tin. It prepares you for, first of all, UAL's graduate showcase, where you get to show off all the brilliant work you've made over the course of the year. But it also prepares you for your first steps into the TV industry. In the Professional Futures Unit, you will set networking goals and develop your long-term career strategy. By this stage in the course, we hope that you know yourself a lot better than you did when you started. So hopefully over the course of the year, you have, will have developed some sense of who you want to be. Do you want to be an editor? Do you want to be a producer? Do you want to be a director? Do you want to be a development producer? So you will have built up that knowledge of the specialism that you want to pursue. Hopefully you'll also discover the kind of genres within television that you're particularly attracted to. We explore them all. So you might find you have a passion for let's say current affairs programs or that you love making news programs or you love arts documentaries. You'll take that knowledge and use it to produce a kind of calling card portfolio to include a refined CV, your major project, your coursework, all of that reversion for maximum impact in professional context when you take your first steps out into the real world of TV. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so who studies uh, MATV? Ah, I think actually before we move into this section of the presentation, it would be really nice to show our showreel to attendees, please, Becky. Uh, just to give you a flavor uh, of the kind of work students make on major projects before we talk about who comes to the course. So whenever you're ready, Becky, if you could play the video. You are not alone. I can't buy your dog food. I'm already in the red. Fake is always fake. I, I was driven to think that the best way out was to end my life. Why they don't say us as human? It matters nothing and you feel so small in this world. If you're going to challenge something, like knowledge to challenge it, rather than just challenging it for no reason. I don't have to be someone what they want you to be. You can't just treat me like a garbage, just throw me away, no way. What can I do? What can I do for this? I make things happen as best I can. Fashions may change, but black style will never die. So hopefully uh, that little showreel gives you a flavour of the kind of major projects that students on MATV make. And as you can see from that showreel, the projects are really very diverse. We, this, these are last year's major projects. So we had two current affairs programs, uh, one about the situation of young Russians and Ukrainians in London, another about uh, so-called hostage 
diplomacy, the fight, uh, the plight of dual national British Iranians who are literally taken hostage by uh, the Iranian state and then held for ransom. Okay, so two current affairs documentaries. We had two fashion orientated documentaries. One, a lovely film called Making It about a tailoring dynasty, a, a family of Caribbean tailors in London, which then opened out more broadly into an exploration of the Caribbean contribution to British style and pop culture more widely. We had a, a lovely film called Maria's Farm, which was about a very unusual kind of therapeutic farm, uh, which uh, brought in autistic children and helped them through working with animals. Uh, we had a very provocative film called Yellow Fever, which uh, looked at the phenomenon of online predators targeting young Asian women. And we had a, a very abstract arts documentary, very avant-garde, called 99 Red Balloons. So a real range of projects to fit the, the range of personalities and backgrounds that you'll often find on an MATV cohort. Which brings me nicely to this question, who studies MA television? So we welcome applicants who have significant experience, either professionally or at undergraduate level, in content creation that they want to develop further at a postgraduate level. What I would add to that is that we look for people with a passion for factual television, okay? And that can be in any genre, whether we're talking about factual entertainment, uh, current affairs, or pure documentary, for example. Next slide, please. So MATV is a full-time course on which you'll be engaged in master's level study. Uh, that clearly is a step up from undergraduate study. We combine critical analysis and industry research with production. And there's no point in me pretending it can be both intensive and challenging. Production takes place both in the TV studio and on location off campus. By far the best way to prepare for the course, bit of a no brainer here, is to watch as much factual television as you can to develop your opinions on what works for you and what doesn't. What kind of programs do you really like and admire? And to try your hand at making short videos. Okay, actually, when the very first thing we do on the course is ask students to make a five minute video piece about themselves. Okay, so if you can try to get your hand in before you even come to the course, that would be a great thing. Written assignments on the course really can be quite challenging and good production, good communication in your production teams really is important. So if English isn't your first language, please do try to work hard to develop your conversational English language skills as much as you can. Uh, next slide, please. And by the way, watching factual TV programmes is actually a great way to learn any language. So here's a diagram of the course, which just shows how the different units run alongside one another or feed into one another with production and media cultures in the first term. Media cultures continues and then runs alongside 
the collaborative unit. We also begin developing your major projects in term two in tandem with work in the collaborative unit. It is intensive, again, as I'm sure Monica will testify. When you come back after the summer break, uh, we complete the major projects unit. You write an essay uh, about your major project and we also begin and complete our major, uh, our professional futures unit to prepare you for those first steps into industry. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, your learning experience, obviously we take health and safety in production context very seriously indeed. It's a great relief to be on the other side of the pandemic. Nonetheless, we will always be mindful of safety looking after you. Uh, we provide a mix of on-campus and online activities, but we're, we're so happy to be on the other side of lockdowns. I'm sure you can imagine it was a very difficult uh, time within which students, uh, within which students were making production. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, what about facilities? Um, well, LCC has an absolutely splendid and very rich range of facilities that you're entitled to use. On campus, we have a 3D workshop, a creative technology lab. We have a very funky canteen and the Typo Cafe. There's a college shop. There's a digital space, gallery spaces. We have the kit room, which is where you will collect all your production kit from, your cameras, microphones, tripods, etc. We've got library services, we have photography studios, there is a printing and finishing area, you can do some printmaking on campus, and there's also an area called The Place. Next slide, please. So what about specialist facilities and equipment? Uh, we've mentioned it several times, but uh, it, it's always worth mentioning again. We have our own multi-camera TV studio on campus. Uh, this is equipped with a state-of-the-art tricoster vision mixing desk, our industry, uh, our documentary kit is industry standard and pretty new. Uh, actually, I just realized this slide has not been updated. Uh, we're no longer working with SF5 cameras. We have spanking brand new Canon cameras that are perfect for use in documentary contexts. And obviously all the accessories that go with the cannons. Okay, next slide, please. Staff expertise is the next area of this presentation. The MATV teaching team is made up of highly experienced practitioners, okay? That means that you will be taught by program makers, okay? Uh, the people who teach on MATV all have stellar backgrounds in industry. So on the more technical side of things, you'll be working with highly experienced practitioners with expertise in studio production, camera, sound, lighting, and all aspects of post-production, broadcast journalism, news presenting and anchoring, documentary producing and directing, format uh, development and production, executive producing and show running, P 
pitching and winning commissions and startup enterprises. And no one will be teaching you from a theoretical standpoint, okay? The team is exclusively comprised of program makers. I myself have a very long track record in the TV industry as a documentary producer, director, before I became an academic. And that is really consistently the case across the board. No one is teaching from a theoretical standpoint. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit more about me. I'm an award-winning factual program maker. Uh, my specialism is arts documentaries, but in fact, I've worked on a wide variety of broadcast television formats, including primetime returning series. I've got 20 years of experience of producing and directing broadcast programs for ITV and Channel 4 under my belt. Uh, ITV and Channel 4 are leading broadcasters in the UK. But before I became a uh, producer director, and I think it's an important thing to know about me, I worked my way all the way up the ladder. I started at the very, very bottom when I was straight out of university as a runner. I then became a production manager. I then became a researcher all before I became a producer director. And I'm, I'm really grateful actually that I went through those steps because I feel it's given me a kind of helicopter view of the whole structure. I'm also a prize winning academic. I undertook my postgraduate degree at the University of Glasgow and my undergraduate degree at the University of Oxford. I aim to inspire and share my experience with the next generation of television innovators. That's you. I bring a wide network of top tier industry contacts and talent to the course. Next slide, please. So, uh, Tal Amaran is an important associate lecturer in the MATV team. He's currently working with students on major projects and he is a multi-award winning director and editor based in London. Tal is known for his beautiful feature documentaries, Daffa Metti, Sandmen and Seven Days a Week. He's a true artist, is Tal. Uh, Tal's films have been screened at over 100 film festivals internationally, um, such as uh, the BFI London Film Festival, and he's won many awards, as I said. He's been shortlisted for the Grierson Awards, Cinema Eye Honours, longlisted for the British Independent Film Awards, and for One World Media Awards. He's a brilliant, brilliant tutor, Tal, and a lovely documentary maker. Okay, next uh, slide, please. Catherine Carpenter. Uh, Catherine Carpenter is one of our highly distinguished visiting practitioners who you will work with in your first term on MA television. Catherine is a broadcast news journalist and news anchor. You will actually work with Catherine to make a news program in your first term. As Monica will tell you, that's a very steep learning curve, but you are working with the best of the best industry professionals. So Catherine's um, journalistic career began on a local newspaper and then she started at the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, as a news trainee just at the turn of the millennium. So she's worked as both a, a, a reporter on the ground, a producer and a news reader at a number of local radio stations and uh, then on national broadcast television. She's currently home correspondent for BBC London News. And she says of the thrill of the news, 
when you wake up in the morning, you've no idea what you're going to face. You could find yourself reporting a crime story, a complicated court case, or even interviewing a famous celebrity. Every day in broadcast news is different. Next slide, please. Okay, Rob McGillivray is our TV studio practitioner. And Rob's had a very long and varied career in filmmaking as he's worked both as a director and a producer in music videos, commercials, TV drama and situation comedy. So if, if you know British TV programmes, you'll know that our most famous soap opera is called EastEnders. And Rob has directed many episodes of EastEnders. He's also written extensively for advertisements, television, and full length feature films. And outside of filmmaking, Rob is a working artist. Uh, he draws beautifully. So, a very, very talented guy with a huge track record in industry. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, Rosie Ellison. We're so happy that Rosie has joined our team as a visiting practitioner just recently. Rosie is a documentary director, a film producer, and a novelist. So although Rosie's roots as a filmmaker are in factual television, um, she is probably now the most successful female film producer in the UK. She is the woman who had the idea to turn the Paddington books into feature films, and she has produced those feature films. Her documentary credits include the arts documentary series, The South Bank Show, which I used to work on too, uh, Arena, another arts documentary series, Omnibus, Bookmark and Grand Designs. But in 2001, she joined David Heyman's production company, Heyday Films, which is famous for making all the Harry Potter movies. Okay, so you could not find a more uh, starry, visiting practitioner than Rosie. And just recently, she won an award for producing one of the top 10 TV moments of 2022, as Rosie was the person who, together with Buckingham Palace and BBC Studios, produced the, the Queen's Tea Party with Paddington Bear, as part of Jubilee celebrations, everyone's favorite memory of the Queen. And she teaches on our course. Rosie is also the producer of a BBC thriller drama series called Capture, which is currently heading into its third series. Next slide, please. So Michael Ho uh, will be your editing tutor. Uh, Michael has a wealth of experience both in documentary contexts and in art, artists, animation, in more sort of fine arts contexts, as well as TV drama and feature films. Recently, Michael's edited award-winning documentaries such as America's War on Abortion and Muslims in Trump's America. Michael works with students to help them develop an editorial sense. That means what to include, what to leave out, and works with students to get a grasp on the technical tools of the trade, such as Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as an overall understanding of the benefits of a structured post-production workflow from an early stage. Next slide, please. Uh, Nick O'Dwyer is one of our associate lecturers, and he is another hugely experienced documentary director and executive producer with nearly 
30 years experience in UK broadcast TV in the industry. Uh, like Catherine Carpenter, Nick comes out of a journalistic background. He originally trained as a newspaper journalism, uh, newspaper journalist before moving into TV and then going on to direct some of the country's most controversial and talked about documentary films. Uh, I'm thinking of a brilliant film that Nick made called Britain's Angriest Men, for example. Fabulous documentary. He's won international awards and he's worked on BAFTA award winning strands. He's had his own company from 2002, Landmark Films. So he brings real world entrepreneurial experience of running a company and developing and winning broadcast, broadcast commissions to his teaching. Nick uh, is not only great on the sort of storytelling side of television, he's also a brilliant technical tutor uh, and he'll be working with you to help you to understand how to use your cameras creatively, how to achieve creative lighting effects and so on. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, Liam Hamilton is another of our visiting practitioners. Uh, Liam is a vastly experienced media executive who has run not merely television productions, but whole channels, network stations, okay? And this has given him a very deep understanding of the creative and commercial needs of both channels and production companies who we can look at as the buyers and sellers of content. So editorially or journalistically in terms of content, Liam has put together first class journalistic teams. He's provided creative leadership and he has launched some of the longest running shows on British TV. Several of the mainstays, for example, a British breakfast news television were created and initially managed by Liam Hamilton. So he's managed media companies, both large and small, and both uh, production companies that are corporate in their nature and brand new ventures or startups. He's been in the media for 40 years and in all of the different roles he's had, he has embraced and managed change. Incredibly impressive uh, person and a very sweet man too. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, Mark Blagden is another of our associate lecturer and uh, Mark works more on the project management side of production. Uh, he does this because his background is in taking some of the world's most famous rock stars on tour, okay? Planning, coordinating and delivering global tours for hairy rock stars, keeping them from trashing their hotel rooms, et cetera, taking care of every aspect from the planning of travel and risk assessment to negotiation with venues, coordination of backstage, technical crews, and transportation of equipment. So if Mark can keep the rock stars in check, I think he'll be okay with you when you join the course. Next slide, please. Um, so we have so many connections to industry that it's hard to tell you about them all within the given time. But other of our guest lecturers and visiting practitioners uh, include other leading figures in the UK television industry, like the wonderful Leo Burley. Monica might want to tell you a little bit about Leo's masterclasses. Leo regularly comes into the course to talk about live case studies of the programs he is making. 
he is again a multiple award winner. He has just won a huge award for a documentary he made with the Olympic athlete Mo Farah. The, this film was called The Real Mo Farah. It broke international headlines because it revealed for the first time that Mo had been trafficked as a child, had been sold into slavery, and had actually been given the identity of another boy. Uh, and I'm very happy to say that this marvelous film has just started to, you know, Leo stacking the awards on his shelf. Most recently, Broadcast Magazine's award, uh, that's the Industry Bible, for the best documentary of 2022. And Leo will be teaching again on MATV very soon. He's coming back to us in May. We're really proud of our working relationship with Leo. Likewise with Jonathan Levi. Jonathan Levi is primarily now known as a true crime producer but he's also a best-selling author. He is also an award-winning, a BAFT award-winning executive producer and showrunner who's made shows for BBC, ITV, Netflix. Jonathan, for example, was the producer of a groundbreaking series called uh, Transformation Street about uh, individuals going through gender transition it was made quite a while ago now, and it was so far ahead of its time. It's quite unbelievable. We also work with David Winnin, who is a format developer and global format consultant. What does that mean? It means that right now, for example, uh, David is helping people in a Romanian TV station to set up their own version of the X Factor. Uh, Dave has worked all over the world with formats. That means shows like Idol, The X Factor, MasterChef, whatever. He works with local producers to make their own versions of these famous shows. And again, you know, huge experience, Channel 4, ITV in China, CCTV, Shanghai Media, and so many more. Uh, I, I would never get to the end of the list. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so research. We do not have a research unit. unit. We used to have but the reason that we, we don't need a research unit is that it really is the underpinning of absolutely everything we do on MATV. MATV isn't a theoretical course. We are about the constantly changing reality of real world television. television. The TV industry today really never stands still, and it's our research activity that keeps us up to date, as well as working with these amazing practitioners you've been hearing about who are out there making prize winning programs right now. Our MATV teaching team brings you reports, therefore, from the absolute cutting edge of television every day. That's what we do. We research not only what's happening, happening in the industry right now, but also we think about what is likely to happen tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So at least half of your activity on MA television will be research based. Good television uh, and good stories flow out of good research. So practice, research, industry knowledge, they're completely intertwined and it is research that binds them all together. Okay, next slide please. So uh, just to give you an idea uh, what some of our graduates go on to do, um, 
a number of our most recent graduating cohort have already found jobs with really prestigious employers in the television industry and globally, like ITV Studios and Sky Television in the UK, Armosa Formats in Israel, Megahertz Productions in Germany, and Tencent in China. Students have also undertaken internships with leader, leading broadcasters like the BBC and cutting edge independent production companies like Rumpus Media. Next slide, please. So um, th another resource that, that will be great for you is the Postgraduate Hub. And this exists to provide information for students transitioning into their MA course from undergraduate study. It provides careers and employment when you're at the other end of your studies for existing students, and it will provide ongoing teaching and learning support and guidance while you're actually doing the course. Next slide, please. LCC Accelerate is a scheme that helps uh, recent graduates. It supports them to include funding, which you can apply for, access to the UAL creative community, expert support, the use of office meeting and technical spaces. Next slide, please. There's also an, a university-wide industry mentoring scheme which connects postgraduate students of all disciplines with industry professionals to support their development as they enter the creative industries. Next slide, please. Okay, we're just getting to the end now, and then I'll hand you over uh, to Monica. I'm sure you're dying to hear from her and sick of the sound of my voice. Uh, applications, to make an application, to any of the courses within the Screen School, you'll need the following, your personal details, your current uh, details of your current and previous education and qualifications, any employment history that you've built up, you'll need to provide a personal statement, and you will also need to uh, provide a little portfolio Okay, you are tasked uh, in current application systems with describing the view out of your window for a minute or two. And it's amazing how creative some applicants can get with this. Uh, you do not need to upload a study proposal to make an application to MATV. Okay. So your personal statement should explain why you are applying to MA television if you decide to do so. Perhaps a particular documentary series or a program maker has inspired you. Tell us about that. You should focus on factual television, not film or TV drama. OK, we're not saying you shouldn't be interested in those things, but what we do is factual TV, all the genres of that, from factual entertainment to the most serious documentaries. OK, so you should show some knowledge of the genres of factual television if you want to make a successful application. And it's helpful to describe any relevant experience you have of program production and your specific interest within that. Again, do you want to be an editor? Do you see yourself as a producer in the future or as a director? Next slide, please. Scholarships and funding, UAL does offer a wide range of scholarships, bursaries, awards, and there's a hardship fund provided uh, through generous donations from individuals, companies, and philanthropic charities, as well as from the university. We know that things are financially hard for a lot of students right now, but there is some help available. Okay, so uh, funds include a postgraduate master's loan, postgraduate scholarships, 
international postgraduate scholarships and uh, there is also an accommodation award which you can apply for. You can check your eligibility criteria at the uh, web address shown there or write to funding at artsac.uk. Next slide, please. Okay, here are contact details for any questions you've got about life at the university. Um, I think, uh, uh, Becky, do, do, will students be sent information here or should I just read it out? Um, you can write to LCC contact with general inquiries, uh, accommodation at artsac.uk for queries about accommodation, student support through student services, scholarships and fees, through funding at arts.ac.uk and any questions about admissions through the admissions department at artsac.uk. Um, all this information will be on UAL's web pages. Okay, next slide, please. Or is that it? I think we have reached the end. So Yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Becky. Yep. If we'd like to hear from Monica or answer questions, what would you rather? Um, well, I think you have some uh, questions, Becky, to put to Monica. And um... yep. that's absolutely fine. We can jump straight into questions then. So, um, right. Monica. Um, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your experience on the course and what you've enjoyed about studying MA Television. Yeah, so actually it just brings back so many memories because last year I was like doing all these applications and stuff and now today I'm sitting here. So, um, hi everyone, I am uh, currently a student at uh, like in LCC and studying MA Television. So for me, I think I am really enjoying the course because I think it gives me a strong foundation to gain the right skill set that are required to produce great quality content. And I'm going to be pitching my uh, major project film idea next week. So I'm really excited for that. And I just wanted to quickly mention that I came with no prior production experience. So this course kind of helped me, you know, figure out what role I really enjoy when it comes to, you know, production or in studio. So for my first term, like for my first term, we produced a news uh, program where I was the producer and I figured that I really enjoy being a producer, like managing schedules and, you know, being on top of things and just like, you know, uh, so overall, basically, I, I understood that that's something I really like. And now for the second term, I... I'm working on camera. So this course kind of gives you an opportunity to kind of like try a lot of different roles and then kind of figure out what you really enjoy and want to do after you're done with the program and you, you graduate. And um, also, I think one thing that really stands out for me in this course is that how practical it is. We do so much of production work. And it was really important for me uh, when I was coming to this course because I didn't want to do something which is which has a lot of theory. So uh, I think this is something which really works for me personally because I wanted to learn uh, how do I like produce content and how can I use my creative skills. So I think that's something which is really nice and works for me. And I think apart from that, uh, we have a lot of uh, workshops which are conducted for us every week where Susan kind of gets a lot of industry professionals to, you know, talk to us and share their experience. So we get a firsthand experience of the industry professionals talking to us about their work, their experience. So I think that's something that's really nice and I really love about uh, this course overall. Thank you. Can I can I just quickly jump in there to say Monica is an absolutely brilliant student and I'm so glad that Monica has made that point about getting to try out different roles. OK, Monica, I think you should have a shot at directing a major project, by the way. Yeah, uh, I, I was just uh, you know, I, I, I just mentioned that. that uh, <laughs> but, uh, 
you know, it, it's a great thing about the course that we don't sort of stick you into a specific role and keep you there. You can really try your hand in a range of different roles. So, so that's an absolutely great point to make. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, more questions for yeah. Monica? She's so good. <laughs> got, a, got a couple more questions. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, so yeah, if I like fumble a little, just excuse me. That's fine. Not at all. Um, what what are you wanting to do after you graduate? Is there an area in particular that you have enjoyed the most and would like to explore further? So to be very honest, now or for now, I think I, I really like being a producer and I think that's something I would want to do. But like Susan mentioned, for my major project, I'm going to be pitching next week. And I think I really like my documentary film topic and I would want to be the director for that uh, for that film. So right now, I'm not sure if if I would be like going for a director's uh, role like after I'm done with my graduation. But for now, I think I, I, I really want to be a producer because that's something I really absolutely enjoy. So I think for now, it would be definitely I would want to be a producer. Perfect. That's lovely. Thank you. We have got a couple of questions coming in, which perhaps are best for you to answer, Susan. Um, sure. Are uh, most of the projects in this course documentary and news? Um, if a student wanted to do a narrative project, would that be encouraged? Okay, uh, we are a factual TV programme, which is not to say that factual TV programmes cannot include, for example, elements of reconstruction or highly cinematic techniques of production. But, you know, we're, we're not about writing a comedy, let's say, or producing a comedy. What we do is factual TV. However, it's by no means just news or a documentary. You know, look at the range of projects produced in our last year's major projects, from current affairs to fashion, right? So it's all the genres of factual TV, from the lightest, frothiest entertainment to the most pure documentary. OK, all, all factual TV programmes are, however, narrative. So there's a little bit of a contradiction in the question. And factual TV programmes need to be dramatic to be engaging also. Perfect, thank you. And another question uh, we've had come in is, is this program suitable for someone looking to change careers and move into the world of television? For example, should someone with an unrelated undergraduate degree and work experience hoping to shift into this industry apply for this program? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's all about the passion for television. Um, it really is. I mean, for example, I'll give you an example. A student came to us a couple of years ago from a background in finance. And in fact, that background really paid dividends, no pun intended, because you need to be very entrepreneurial to succeed in today's world of TV production. Monica came out of something called compliance in television, which is not actually making programs. It's, um, well, Monica, you're a better place to describe what compliance is than I am. But I would say that Monica is flying. She has gained creative wings on MATV. So a background that is not, a professional background that is not in TV or video is no barrier to joining the course if you can prove to us that you actually watch TV, uh, that you know a bit about it, and that you've got a sense of what kind of programmes you might want to be involved in making. Lovely, that's thank uh, that's perfect, thank you. Um, Monica, would you mind um, expanding a little bit on what projects you've worked on um, over, over the course of your studies?
Did Monica hear the question? Might have frozen potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh no, so, you're back. Uh, back. In my term one, we produced a news program. We produced like a like a lot of stories. We had to... Hi, you, can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, you're back now. Yes. Sorry, if you wouldn't yeah, mind starting can. again. You, oh, I think Monica's connection is a little unstable, unfortunately. Okay, that's no problem. In which case, we will. Um, I will um, ask you one final question, Susan, and then we will conclude the presentation. Um, is there anywhere for applicants to view um, students' work? Yes, on the MATV course pages on the university's website if you literally do a google search ma television university of the arts london it will take you straight into our course pages a lot of the information you'll already have been given here but there are more student and graduate stories and further examples of matv work and may, maybe as Monica's frozen, I can just uh, tell you a little bit more about what Monica's done before we sign off. Um, as Monica said in term one, she made a news program uh, for which multiple stories are produced. Um, she worked in the TV studio with Catherine Carpenter, our professional news anchor. This term, she's working on a collaboration with the football organization I told you about psychology, and she's getting ready to pitch a wonderful idea for a major project. You're back with us, Monica. Would you like to tell the students about your plans for your major projects? Uh, can you guys hear me? I'm so sorry. We can, uh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, so for my major project, I'm really excited for my movie. I am trying to uh, pitch a movie which talks about, can I tell my idea, Susan? Yes, absolutely. It's a great idea. I love it. I'm really hoping uh, it happens. So I, so my, uh, so my documentary topic is about the fetish community. So I want to like kind of talk about and you know confront the stigma and the stereotypes that is around with the kink and the fetish community and i want to kind of like talk about you know helping them to so basically the documentary is going to be talking about how this community helps people to kind of find their identity and how the society kind of like paints them with a big negative giant negative brush so it's going to be about that and i have like spoken to my contributor so i had like an interview with her yesterday and i think she's really lovely and i'm just like trying to work on my pitch and trying to make my sizzle reel which is kind of like a small trailer for your pitch for your panel to kind of get a gist of how you want to like make your film and like just to understand the filming style so i'm just working on that but i'm kind of like hoping that it gets greenlit and yeah, so I think it's a really um, exciting time when you're actually preparing for your major, uh, you know, project idea because you're brainstorming so much and you want to, you know, make a film that you're passionate about and you 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 really care about that subject. So I think that's that's really interesting because you're working on a lot of things. So we are working on three different, uh, like parallelly, we are working on three di different like terms. But I think still, even if even if it is like, uh, how do I say, um, it, it's like a little hectic, but I think still you enjoy doing it because once you like come to the course, I think you really start enjoying the challenges because that each challenge, the each challenge like helps you to learn something. And I think that's that's really something I, I really enjoy because I'm someone who likes to challenge myself and I like to keep learning. So yeah, I think I'm really excited for this phase of the course. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Monica. Really? Um, we've actually had one last question come in, so I will ask this because I think it's quite important. Um, do students need to know a lot of technical skills before they start or will they have some technique support? 
on the course? No, uh, no, you know, we have many <laughs> students who come to us, frankly, with no technical skills whatsoever. Just that great passion and appetite, that creative appetite that we look for. Okay, so you're provided with extensive technical support. You learn as you progress through the course. So you'll have sound workshops, camera workshops, editing workshops, lighting workshops, so that by the time you arrive at major projects, not only will you have learned through doing, I mean, seriously, the best way to learn about those techniques is it's like playing an instrument. You, you learn by practicing, okay? But you are supported by specialist tutors in all of those areas. And those aren't the criteria that we will bring to your application. Lovely. Thank you so much for answering those questions, Susan and Monica, and uh, thank you for giving such a thorough presentation. Uh, we appreciate it. And on that note, I will end the webinar. Um, thank you very much to everyone for attending. OK, thank you, Becky, and thank you, Monica. I'm so glad you were able to join us and talk about things from the student perspective. And thank you to the attendees and apply apply to MATV, although I run it, I think it's a great course. Okay, thanks so much and bye.